Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Trinity Lutheran on this third Sunday in the season of Easter that the Lord has not blessed us with the weather of Easter this morning, but we continue our Easter season series that the Lord most certainly has poured out his Easter blessings upon his people, his church. Last weekend, we saw that the Lord has blessed his people with the gift of Easter peace. This morning, we see that Jesus blesses his people with the gift of of Easter understanding. May the Lord bring us to a deeper and richer understanding of Christ crucified and raised to life again this morning. And may we do that as we sing the opening hymn, hymn number 145. We'll sing stanzas one through three. The Lord bless our worship of him today. Please stand. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins 
and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. For all that we need in life and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world from the despair of death. By his resurrection to life, grant your faithful people gladness of heart and the hope of eternal joys. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Our first lesson comes from Acts chapter 3. While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the Holy and Righteous One, and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. 
We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. Now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. But this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Messiah would suffer. Repent then, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah, who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. Our second lesson comes from 1 John chapter 1. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his Son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make Him out to be a liar, and His word is not in us. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world.
please stand. Our gospel lesson is from Luke chapter 24. This will be the text in consideration for our sermon today. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sin will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated.
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I love a good steak. And I also think that a good steak tastes even better when it's eaten al fresco, out there in the fresh air, you know, as you, you watch a golden sunset behind a glassy lake. I love the sound of, of good music, but, but good music, for instance, the music of Bach, I'm convinced, sounds a little better when you actually listen to it in Bach's church, surrounded by pillars and paintings and windows and statues that have stood for hundreds of years rather than listening to that same music in a linoleum-tiled recital hall at the local community college. Don't tell anyone, but I love the smell of a good cigar. And I'm also convinced that that smell is just a little bit better when that smell is out there on the patio where you're surrounded by old friends and your ears are filled with conversation. And no one would ever accuse me of being Mr. Public Display of Affection. But I have to say, there is something to watching your boys come home from school through the door and you feel that, that big manly hug of theirs. It, it does a dad's heart good. God has created us, Luther says in his large catechism, with body and soul, eyes, ears, all our members, my mind and all of my abilities, our, our senses are one of the wonderful things about being human as we watch and listen and taste and smell our way through life on planet Earth. Those, those rich tastes and beautiful sounds and sweet smells are all undeserved blessings from God to us. Because you and me, we are, are unique in God's creation as human beings. You see, if we were just souls, we'd be like the angels. If we were just bodies, then we would be like the monkeys or the dolphins or a million and one other animal creatures. But, but you and me as human beings, we are body and soul, a, a wonderful knitting together of the physical and spiritual of God's creation. And because as people we have that, that bodily and physical, bodily and spiritual elements to us, God our Creator has spoken to His people in wonderful graphic ways over the years. Rewind with me for a moment this morning to the Old Testament. What was it like, do you think, the first time that you went to the temple as a preteen? As you walked toward Temple Mountain, your ears began to be filled with the bleeding of sheep and the songs of the temple choir. And as you drew a little closer, your eyes opened up in amazement as you saw the, the high priest decked out in ritual garb. But then as you came even closer, you stood there mute, wide-eyed, as you watched as animal throats were cut, their blood collected, and then poured out upon the altar. The smells, as the hair and hide of animal after animal goes up in ritual smoke from the altar, all of this was a sensory sermon with this sobering theme. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. And on a Friday afternoon, God shed his blood. And through that God blood, man's forgiveness is won. And then on and now Sunday afternoon, three days later, there he stood once again in the midst of his disciples, serving up an Easter feast for the census. 
That moment when Jesus stands there in the midst of his disciples on that first Easter Sunday evening, if you were standing there in the disciples' sandals, where are you at? It had been a, a confusing day. The women early that morning came back from the tomb saying that Jesus was not there, the body was not there, he had been raised again, but, but their report sounded like utter nonsense to you. Now the plot began to thicken that evening as two of your colleagues come running back in all the way from the little town of Emmaus outside of Jerusalem saying that they had just seen Jesus alive and well. But you had sensed some other things in the last few days. Your ears had heard the cry of crucify. Your eyes had seen the Son of God nailed to wood. Your nose had smelled the blood and the death and the rot of Mount Calvary, Golgotha, the place of the skull. And what did you feel? You felt cold drops of sweat evaporating on your forehead as you ran away from Jesus into the darkness of the night. So where are you at that day as Jesus' disciple? Could the dead really live again? Do I have the hope, maybe, of seeing Jesus again? Or do I really want to see Jesus again? Because odds are good that if I see Jesus again, he is going to come back as judge and jury to write me off as the unbelieving, doubting pack of cowards that we were. Where am I at? Where the disciples were that first Easter evening was swimming in a sewer of uncertainty. And just that quick, Jesus comes and pulls them up from the sewer of their uncertainty and serves them up a feast for their Easter senses. Listen close. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still did not believe it, because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish. He he took it and he ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Jesus appeared and with their eyes they watched in amazement. Jesus spoke, and with their ears they heard what he had to say. Jesus sat down and tasted the broiled fish supper that they placed before him. All of this was a sensory sermon that proved this one non-disputable fact. Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. A walking, talking fulfillment of every syllable that God had ever, ever spoken about him on the pages of the Old Testament. The living flesh of Jesus and the living word of God's truth were non-disputable proof that Christ was indeed raised from the dead, the great I am, God himself. Jesus treated his disciples to an Easter feast for the census. Meanwhile in America, in most of Western Christianity, in North America, in Europe, we've by and large lost that physical center of the Christian faith. And instead, by and large, Christianity in our day and our country has become a, a list of do's and don'ts so you can do better in life. 
Or Christianity has been boiled down to sort of be um, another philosophy, uh, a way of looking at life, maybe a way of coping when things don't go well. We say often that Jesus died to save our souls. But we forget that he died to save our bodies and our souls. We speak regularly about people being in heaven. But rarely, if ever, do we speak about our dead loved ones being raised to life again on the last day when Christ comes very bodily in glory. To a great degree, Christianity in our day has become a mishmash of psychology and spirituality. And if Christianity is just that, then there really is not much of a pressing need for us to be in God's house. And if, if Christianity is just a mishmash of psychology and spirituality, then it goes on the shelf with all of the other different spiritual paths that are available. Buddhism, Hinduism, whatever path you want to choose. It seems that Christianity in our day and age is certain of this, that we're not certain of much at all. And by and large, American Christianity is okay with that. And we should be frightened by that. Listen, brothers and sisters, the Son of God, the eternal Son of the Father, did not wrap himself in the flesh of an infant baby in the uterus of a virgin mother so that he could invent a new way of spirituality. Jesus did not go in the flesh toe-to-toe with temptation successfully for 33 long years so that he could teach us some tips on how to live a good life. Jesus did not allow spikes to be driven through his hands and through his feet so that he could show a nebulous love for people on the cross. He did that to provide the once and all blood sacrifice for our sins. Jesus did not rise from the dead bodily on the third day so that a nebulous soul could go to a surreal heaven. He rose bodily, truly, from the dead on the third day so that one day our bodies that have seen death and decay might be raised again to resurrected newness of life. And at that very moment, we will be everything that God ever intended us to be, truly, fully human, perfect body, perfect soul, never again to sin, never again to die, to live forever seeing God in the paradise of God. Jesus isn't an idea. Jesus isn't a philosophy. Jesus isn't a spirituality. If you want all of that stuff, you can listen to Oprah. Ideas don't stop breathing on Good Friday afternoon and start breathing again on Easter Sunday morning. Philosophies don't sit down and have broiled fish supper with disciples. Spiritualities don't have hands and feet that you can look at and touch. And being convinced by that sensory feast that Jesus served up that first Easter Sunday, those disciples were willing to go out and put it all on the line to preach and teach not a man-made philosophy, but the power of Christ and his resurrection. St. John, 60 years later, would look back on all of it, the last living disciple with all his brother disciples having given their life for preaching the living Jesus. And John says, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we've looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim to you concerning the word of life. Those things are still 
proclaim to you concerning the word of life. Brothers and sisters, this snowy, ugly morning in southeastern Wisconsin, the good news, the gospel of Jesus, is as good today as it ever was on Easter Sunday, that because Christ has been raised, we have forgiveness, justification for all of our sins. Still today, your ears hear the word of living truth, and through that word, the Lord who lives is all yours. Late service this morning. Salvation is still there to be touched when baby William Westfall is going to be touched with the water of baptism and the word of baptism. And at that moment, Christ the living Lord becomes all William's and William is all his and he could not be more of a child of God than he will be this morning. In just a few moments, you will come forward and you will taste and see that the Lord's salvation is good as you taste bread and wine in the living body and blood of God's Son. And at that very moment, you are totally forgiven and dearly loved and could not be closer to the living Christ. If Jesus this morning is just an idea, a philosophy, a spirituality, you have no reason to be here today. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. And all of the living certainties of God's Son, saving certainties, are here for you today, brothers and sisters, which means to not be regularly in God's house, that's insanity. May our Lord Jesus richly bless all of you today with these two certainties. That because Jesus Christ lives again, body and soul, so too in Christ one day you will live again, body and soul. My prayer for you today is that the wonder of the shepherds at Christmas time the wonder of the disciples in that upper room might continue to be the wonder that puts joy into your life. Until that day in the future that will be here before you know it. When you, brothers and sisters, will sit down and taste the marriage feast of the Lamb, and with your own ears, you will hear the song of saints and angels. And with your nose, you will smell the beautiful incense of the prayers of God's people in heaven. And you will look around. And then you will see the beautiful face of Jesus. And finally comes the touch the touch of those wonderful nail-scarred hands, the touch of that finger that will wipe the final tear from your eye. This I am certain of today. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Amen. Please stand. And now the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess the faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit in the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Just a few announcements this morning. As far as adult instruction or adult uh, enrichment this morning, I did get a phone call from Professor Otto. It turns out the weather north of us is a lot worse than what we have uh, down here in wonderful Waukesha. Professor Otto will not be meeting his Bible class down in the fellowship hall this morning. I cordially invite all the brothers and sisters from downstairs, upstairs to the Bible boot camp class will be dealing with the topic of what do you do when you think you might see a contradiction in Scripture? How do you read and resolve those issues? You're welcome upstairs between services. Uh, the postcards did go out. Wonderful opportunity for growth groups coming up for the five next weeks here. Uh, the train is leaving the station on that one. You can sign up at trinitywells.com for that growth group. Or we also have the, uh, the old school method of signing up for growth groups. Don Dittmar has a map back there with, with paper forms that you can sign off to the right as you leave church this morning. Whatever works for you, get your name down. You'll be happy that you are part of one of those groups. Finally, this morning, just a bit of information for the congregation. I received a text about 15 minutes before church began. It has pleased the Lord, the, the living Savior, to take out of the world the soul of our brother, uh, Pastor Bill Bernhardt. Uh, he was the longtime host of the Wells Connection, a uh, member here at, at Trinity. Um, We'll have a prayer for the Bernhardt family this morning, and just then a reminder, keep your ears and eyes open for funeral arrangements that have not yet been made for Pastor Bernhardt. I'm sure that will be a, a larger funeral that we'll be looking at this week here. Those are the announcements. Do now please take a moment with the friendship registers and the pews as we gather our gifts of love to the Lord this week.
Please stand for prayer. Gracious God and Father, we praise you for the countless blessings which we receive from your hand, the beauties of creation and the bounties of the earth, the joy of life and the pleasure of friendship, the good of work and the gift of rest, the privilege to share the happiness and sorrow with one another. Above all, we praise and thank you for your saving word and for your Son's body and blood, which you gave us to eat and to drink in the sacrament. Through these means of grace, you send the Holy Spirit into our hearts and unite us to Jesus and to the whole Christian church on earth. Great God and Lord, without your continuing help, we easily waver in our faith lose courage, and grow careless in our watchfulness. The times and days are perilous. Give us strength to face the evils of each day with fresh confidence. Open our lips to speak of your grace and move us to use the gifts that you give us to share your word of salvation with all people. Protect and prosper the family, the school, the government, and all good institutions that you have established for the benefit of society. Remember in mercy those who are sick and suffering, and bring your healing to troubled homes and lives. O Lord, you are the great physician of body and soul. We pray that you would look with mercy on Zona Shalo's niece, who recently had a cancerous mass removed in surgery. If it is your will, spare her life and restore her strength. Deal compassionately with your servant and bless the medical means employed on her behalf with your healing power. O Lord God, Lord of life and death, we thank you for all the mercies with which you blessed our fellow believer, Bill Bernhardt, now fallen asleep. We thank you especially for having brought him to the knowledge of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray that you would comfort his family and all who mourn his death with your precious promises and cheer them with the sure hope of a blessed reunion in heaven. Lord of the Church, having got asked for your guidance, our, our congregation has called Mr. Guy Gast to serve as the seventh grade teacher and athletic director at Trinity Lutheran School. We ask that as he prayerfully considers this call, you would guide him to a decision that is in the best interest of your kingdom. As we await his decision, bless our congregation and its ministry, that your kingdom may continue to grow and flourish among us. We ask this in the name of the Good Shepherd and the Head of the Church. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Now, eternal God and Father, keep us in the saving faith, and so enable us to overcome all things through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We join in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, and placed all things under his feet for the benefit of the church. 
now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please stand. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.